Hello, I'm Professor Liu. Welcome to our live stream. We have a special guest artist today, Anjali Shankar, who is currently a student at MICA, better known as the Maryland Institute College of Art. And we're gonna be talking to Anjali today about her experience as an undergraduate student, as a painting major, and also currently enrolled as an MAT student in their art education program. If you would like to grow as an artist and you can't afford an art class, we've got everything you need here at Art Prof, critiques, tutorials, and professional development. So Anjali, let's start at the beginning. When you were applying for colleges, did you only apply to art schools? What types of schools did you apply to? I, my original intention was to apply to mostly universities, um, just because when I was applying to colleges, I, I did not know I was going to go to art school at all. I was very much like, no, I'll go to university, be an art major or like a double major or something. So my intention was to apply to mostly universities. But when I actually started applying, I applied to like, I think, eight art schools and two state schools. Um, so I applied to MICA, SAIC, RISD, um, Carnegie Mellon I applied to, I forget which, oh MassArt I applied to just because I was living in Massachusetts at the time. Um, and to my surprise I got into all of them which I was like wait <laughs> no this isn't right. Um, so it was definitely like a surprise for me that I was able to like, I got into all the art schools, but I didn't get into the universities or state schools that I applied to. So I was like, okay, well, <laughs> um, yeah. And how did you make the decision to go to MICA? Because that's a lot of schools to have to decide between. Yeah, I was, um, MICA, I had attended the pre-college program there the year before just to like get a taste of art school and whether it was like for me if I should try it. So by the time I was applying for college, I had already known people at MICA. Um, it was in Maryland and my grandpa actually lived like an hour outside of the city uh, where the school was. Um, so I, I knew people there, I had family there and they gave me the most money out of all the schools. They gave me the most money and they were the most flexible with my living situation because I did not want to live on campus. Um, I was like, I don't want to live in the dorms with a bunch of strangers. I just want to live off campus. And usually they require freshmen to live on campus for some reason, I don't know why, um, but they require that. But I was like, no, please, can I please like live you know, with my grandpa or like somewhere else? So I got approved for that for MICA, which was so great because it saved a lot of money for me and I was able to like live in my own space um, my freshman and sophomore year, which was great. Cool. Yeah, that's sort of unusual. I would not usually expect a school to be so flexible like that. That's really cool. Yeah. And let's talk a little bit about the structure of MICA because I know that a lot of art schools have a foundations program that they require first year students to go through. And then usually people declare their major and they spend three years in their major. Is that what MICA does or do they have something different? They have a foundation year where you can declare your major and be like, oh, I'm a painting major or fibers major or whatever, but you are still required to go through the foundation classes. Um, and when I was there, it was like a certain set, but then halfway through like my sophomore year, they changed it entirely. So I'm not like super clear on what it is right now, but it's still like, you know, you get a taste of everything basically. And then sophomore year, that's when you start like your major major. Um, but I've noticed that Micah is pretty flexible actually with your major. Like if you decide you want to change it, they help you like it's very easy to change your major. I knew like several students that were like, yeah, I changed majors like three times and I'm happy where I'm at right now. So they are very flexible with that. There is a certain point, though, where you <laughs> it's hard to make that decision. Like if you're a junior in your second semester and you want to change your major, that's a little bit of a different conversation. 
But if you're still in your like second semester, sophomore year, like you can still like that's still possible. And how did you make the decision to be a painting major? Because I know when I used to teach freshmen at RISD, it was this apocalyptic moment <laughs> that everybody would go through. I mean, it almost felt like you were selling your soul to the devil once you declared your major and people really agonize over it when they have that decision. Is Was that... Was it like that for you or was it easier and more straightforward? It was definitely easy for me. And I don't know, I've like, looking back, I've kind of thought about like, oh, maybe I should have thought more about the major I wanted to be in. Cause I was definitely like, I entered with painting and then I just went with it. I was like, this is, I want to be a painting major. Um, and the reason I did that was because one, I really like painting just in general, just like as a practice, I liked it. Um, but also the painting department I've noticed was very flexible also. It was like the painting majors had access to studios that other majors didn't have access to. Like, and I don't, yeah, mostly the studios, the funding, you get more grants if you're a painting major, like there's more grants available to you to apply for um a lot more scholarship based grants um and me in particular i was very much a student that was like sorry micah i'm gonna do what i want um so i was very much like i was taking classes in a lot of different areas that weren't painting which were actually it's yeah i don't know how to describe it because it's not a very common practice you'd I found it definitely an uphill battle to take classes that weren't in your major, but I, <laughs> I did it anyway. Cause I was like, I want to learn. Yeah. That is something that I know for a lot of art school students is a big concern is how easy is it for me to do work outside of my major? Because I've seen schools where it's so hard because there's so many required classes and the departments get really picky about who they'll let into the classes. And I've also taught at art schools where it's like, woo, pick whatever you want. <laughs> so yeah. it's a really hard balance for a lot of the art schools to achieve for the students. And tell me in the chat, you guys, who here is going to art school right now? Are any of you applying this year? because I think there's so much involved with the decision-making process and preparing the portfolio and everything. I mean, was the portfolio hard for you to prepare? Me? Yeah. <laughs> um, I forget, people have been asking me this like more and more recently. It's like, oh, how is it preparing an art portfolio for Micah? Um, so it was, I, I forget how difficult it was, but it was difficult. Like it was like you wanted your work to really stand out um, with admissions and you just, you wanted to be like, you wanted Micah to want you like as a student. And it was just like, how do I show that in my work? Um, my admissions counselor was great. He was amazing. Um, and he, and actually Micah's admissions counselors, all of them are really nice and considerate and will help you even like if you're just a high schooler and you just want to know more about how to apply and what they're looking for, you can like, I'm pretty sure I just emailed them and just asked. I was like, what is Micah looking for in an application? Like what, like what students get in versus what students don't like, what's the comparison? And they'll let you know, they'll talk to you, um, which was super helpful. And I definitely noticed when applying to Micah out of all the art schools I attended or like got into, um, Micah was the friendliest. And I don't, like the, the vibe at Micah was very much like people would, people were very friendly. People were very willing to help you. It was like very community centered and community based. Um, there was definitely less, what's it called? Like pompous attitude that I saw at some other art schools. Um, yeah. Well, I think, one thing that a lot of students consider is maybe shifting their portfolio a little bit depending on which school it's going to. So for a lot of students, they don't prepare one portfolio and just send it out to everybody. Sometimes they say, oh, well, maybe this 
art school, I'll add a couple more paintings, or maybe this art school, I'll make it more diverse. If there's any advice you would give for somebody who is applying to MICA, what would you say maybe they are looking for? Yeah, I remember doing that as well when I was applying. I would change my I would change my art portfolios. Um, for MICA in particular, they want to know that you know how to draw, like how to draw something representationally and accurately, um, especially if you're just a freshman applying. They want to know what skill level you are and how you're working with different materials. Um, I'm pretty sure also while you're applying, you can submit your major that you're applying for. So if you're applying for a painting major, they want to see the different techniques you're working with, the different ideas you're working with. They also want to see that you can write about your work. Um, that's a big thing. Like, can you write about your work? Can you describe your work? Can you think, can you talk about the, the ideas that were behind it? We have a comment from Ross who's saying, thanks for the stream. I'm looking at Micah as a game design major. Very cool. And what about the balance at Micah, I suppose, between design and more industry-based content like game design, animation, and also fine arts? Would you say that there's one that's more dominant or is it more equally distributed? I would say the biggest three majors at MICA are graphic design, illustration, and painting, um, like in that order. And those are really the three that get the most attention. Um, those are the three that MICA makes the most space for in my experience. Um, I had a couple friends in game design that really enjoyed it, but it is a really small department. Um, and I, yeah, it, yeah, it's just like a very small department, but their facilities are nice, actually. I've been inside the game design building and it's like, it's pretty nice. Um, well, that's one reason why I say to students, listen, when you guys are researching schools, don't just research the school, you gotta research the department because depending on the school, some departments are tiny yeah. and not that prominent. For example, at RISD, architecture and illustration are the two largest departments. Ceramics is so small. There's like two people in the major. And so it's important to take a look at the departments because they can be so different depending on what's going on. No, we have a absolutely. comment from Scott who says, I'm leaving MICA for my last application because I think it's pretty challenging compared to my other schools. Their portfolio review was super nice. I'm a prospective sequential illustration major. So that's another question, Anjali. How rigorous is MICA? Are, are you working your butt off the whole time? Is it pretty laid back or is it just depend on your major and who you're taking a class from? It definitely the teacher for sure, but it's generally across the board, very rigorous. Um, they expect a lot from you and it's definitely like they set high, like the bar is high um, and it can be very competitive, although not as competitive, like the general atmosphere is like, yes, it's a competition and we're competitive and we wanna be the best, but it's more so like, we also wanna help each other versus like shoving people out of the way. Um, <laughs> but it is it is very rigorous. Um, gosh, I'm so many memories are coming back to me just like late nights in the studio. But if teachers see that you are purposeful and you take initiative and you wanna get better, like it's gonna get easier the more work you put into it. So the more you're enjoying yourself, the more you're asking questions, the more you're participating in critique, the more you're learning and the teachers see that, the easier it's gonna be um, because the teachers see that effort and they see that you wanna get better. Um, and that's really what they look for um, with their high expectations. And I've had teachers that are very considerate and very like, also just talking to your teachers about like, if you're not able to make an assignment or if there's too much pressure on you, talk to your teacher because more often than not, I've noticed that they do understand and they are very considerate. And it's just like, they're usually like, you got a lot going on right now. Just <laughs> don't worry about it. Um, versus if you stay silent, they're more likely to judge you 
based on your the work that you're giving. And if you're going through a hard time and the work just doesn't compare, then it's kind of like, what's your like, what's your excuse? Like what's going on? Um, so I always say like communicate with your teachers um, if things are getting like difficult and also just form a relationship with them because they will help you. Like if they if they see that you're doing really well in a class and you want to apply for an on-campus job or even just like have a reference for an outside like artist internship, you know, building those relationships, they will help you like get those internships and opportunities and like help you figure out different things in the art world and outside of school. Yeah, I think a lot of students, sometimes there's this expectation that, well, if I go to this school, I'm all set and I will get a job because I'm going to the school. And that really is not true. <laughs> it's up to you. Your education really is in your hands and you will get out of art school what you put into it. You, it's not a passive situation. I mean, I think as an artist, you cannot sit back and let the school do it for you. I mean, I've seen people go to very prestigious art schools and just be a total bum. So it's really- Yeah, no, it's you. definitely like you have to take initiative. I know I was definitely a student that was took a lot of, <laughs> I was like, I'm gonna make my education the way I want it. So I was like, I wanna live off campus freshman year. I want to go abroad my sophomore year. I want to be an RA when I come back. Like when I applied to be an RA, they were like, no, sorry. Like, we're not going to let you do that because at the time when I applied, I was abroad and there was a whole application process that was like, you have to be in person for. And I was like, please, I really want to be an RA when I get back, blah, 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 blah. And then they were like, okay. Um, and we'll give you an interview. And then luckily that led to me like actually getting the job. Um, so it's definitely like, you really have to like grab the bull by the horns and be like, this is what I want to do. And I want to do it this way. Because I also noticed a lot of other students at Micah that were just passive and were just kind of like, oh, I got to take this required class. I got to do this, blah, blah, blah. And just kind of like going through the motions of just fulfilling their degree requirements and not necessarily getting the most out of Micah. And speaking of the other students, what is the student body like? Because a lot of students ask me about facilities. They say, oh, well, what types of studios are there? What are the dorms like? And of course, that's important. I mean, that is a big part of the experience. But in my opinion, what truly makes a school is the people. Because world-class facilities are not going to inspire you all the time the way your community can. So did you feel that there was that mutual exchange of ideas with students? Were you really getting stuff from each other? What is the community like? Definitely, I loved the people here. Um, like at first when I got here, I lived off campus, so I wasn't as connected to them um, as I was when I started being an RA. But they, like I noticed that the people at MICA at least in like my year and the, and the coming years before me, we're, they were great people to talk to and they were very interested in collaborating and exchanging ideas and working with each other. Um, and it was very easy to do so. And there was always like a handful of people that were like, no, not that. <laughs> like there's always gonna be those people, but I definitely noticed that Micah more so than not, they always wanted to talk, make friends, talk about what you're doing, talk about their projects, um, very driven. A lot of the MICA students, I've almost every MICA student I've met is like very driven um, and thinking about new things, thinking about new ways of making things. And really like the reason I was, a large part of why I was able to take classes in other majors was because I was able to talk to people in other majors and be like, oh, what's this class like? What are you doing there? How, like, how difficult it is? Like, what are you learning in there? And even if you're not able to get into the class that you want, if you have a friend in another major, they can show you that. Um, they don't really, teachers don't want you <laughs> to do that. Uh, like if you have a friend that's a printing major, printing major, they don't really want the printing major's friend to use their facilities. But that doesn't mean you can't watch what they're doing and like see how they're using the facilities. Um, but yeah, no, the community here is really nice. 
I like I like it a lot. And it's definitely when I visited other schools, I definitely noticed a different vibe at MICA than I did at like RISD or SAIC. So I tamely is saying, so true, education is all about self-motivation. I was a lazy student, really didn't take initiative later in life. And Seven Angelic is saying, like most things in life, you got to care and make the effort. Absolutely. I think that, especially as an artist, I mean, you cannot just sit around and hope, oh, maybe somebody will notice my work. I mean, you have to take that initiative. And I think that you start learning that in college. That's where yeah. it really does begin. I want to give a quick shout out to Tom G. Thank you so much for the super chat. Tom G is saying thanks for this important stream. And we always appreciate your support. As you guys know, our content is 100% free and we want to keep this accessible. So we rely entirely on donations. So let's talk a little bit about the curriculum at MICA. So for example, you were a painting major. Now, do they make you take a lot of required classes or do you get to pick a little bit more? I actually think it really depends on the major. Um, I can't speak to other majors, but I will notice, I noticed that my major in particular and my requirements, I was able to fill those requirements fairly quickly. And I don't know, actually, I know why. It was because I took several six course semesters. That's why I took a couple semesters where I was taking six classes. That's, that's the why. But I did that because I wanted to like make room for like other classes and other majors. Um, but actually it wasn't, um, they definitely, there's, it's like a medium amount of required classes where you can take your time and complete the requirements or you can get them done really quickly and have room for later. And it just really depends like what you're looking for and what you're interested in. Um, and they build in like electives into each major so that you know, you're required to take an elective course so that you can explore something else. Um, and that's usually built into different majors. Um, I think that, oh, everyone is required to take life drawing. Like that's definitely like everyone, every major, you have to take life drawing. And there's, I think there's a couple other classes that everyone has to take. Um, a couple of liberal arts classes too that you have to take, um, but there's usually, yeah, only a handful. And I don't know, I think that illustration majors require, there's more required classes for that major and the classes are much harder to get into because there's so many of them and everyone's fighting for like specific classes. Um, so there's definitely departments that are more cutthroat than others. I definitely thought that the painting department was more like flexible um, versus the illustration department, which was very like cutthroat and like, rigid um but like i can't like i wasn't an illustration major so i don't know if that's completely accurate but yeah we have a comment from scott who says i hope we're able to use things like oil even in illustration i love digital and pencil and ink but combining fine arts is neat too would you say that's possible at micah yeah absolutely even if you talk i think you would actually have to talk to the teacher um but usually I can't imagine that they would be like, no, you can't use oil for illustration. Like, I can't imagine that they would say that. Um, but it definitely just talking to the teacher and being like, hey, I want to do, I want to use this material. Can I? Like, just asking them. It really, it, at that point, it really does depend on the teacher, like what they want you to use. And of course, like, you're going to have some teachers and some assignments where you're required to use a certain material so that you could learn that specific material. Um, but if it's not an assignment like that, like, yeah. I think a lot of students just don't realize that you can ask. It's okay. <laughs> like the worst case scenario is the teacher says, no, you can't do that. But actually a lot of the time students would say, oh, can I do this? And I say, yeah, sure. Go ahead. And they're like, really? I can't. I'm like, did I tell you you couldn't? And exactly. so that's where that initiative comes into play because I'll tell you a lot of the limitations that art students think they have a lot of them are self-imposed. They, they don't yeah. come from the teacher, even though it's easy to say, oh, well, the teacher said do this, this, and this. There's actually a lot of flexibility. 
So in terms of outside of major classes, can you name some of the electives that you were able to take? Yeah, I also just want to add on your previous point that asking also applies to money. Always ask for more money. Like the worst they can do is say no, because I was definitely every year I would apply to, for the competitive scholarship. And like, if I get some great, if I don't, I'd be like, hey, is there any money you can give me? <laughs> Like just send financial aid an email. Hey, <laughs> of course, like more professional, but it, that also applies to scholarship and money. Just ask. Worst they can do is say no. Um, but yes, yeah, some of the electives I took was, oh my gosh, I took biofabrication, which was really cool. Um, I got to, it was in the sculpture, sculpture department and it's basically working with like actual cells and like, <laughs> petri dishes and you work in a lab and you make like bioluminescent cells and it's just like the intro course so it's just it's fun um and that kind of filled in for my science requirement because i think at mica yeah at mica you're required to take one science or math class um and so that filled in my science requirement um i was able to take digital fabrication which is really cool because i wanted to have access to the cnc router and laser cutter so I was able to learn and do those. I took a lot of woodworking classes. Um, actually, maybe I just took one and I just kept doing it on my own afterwards. <laughs> I think that's what happened. I took intro to wood, um, got familiar with the studio and like the wood shop. And then after I took that, I just kept going to the wood shop because I had that skill now. So I just kept doing that. Um, I wanted to take an illustration course but those classes are just so competitive to get into if that's not your major that it was just, and I was like, you know, like, it's okay. Like I mostly just wanted to learn about like the fancy things. Um, I really wish like what, okay. When I said at the beginning, like when I wish I thought more about my major, um, I wish I had taken like a fibers course or thought about being a fibers major um, just to explore that area because I fibers, like the fibers department and sculpture department is in a completely different building than like painting, drawing everywhere else. And it's a little bit farther away from campus. Um, but they had like great facilities there. They had like a whole dye kitchen. They had these like big tables where it's like very easy to work with fiber material looms. They had a, they also had a, like a digital, I forget what it's called, but it's like a digital weave, thing. I forget what that's called. Um, but it's basically like, you can weave stuff. Oh, I also took a film class. That's right. I also took a film class. Um, and Micah has this thing with Johns Hopkins where they um, have like a collaborative major in film with Johns Hopkins and Micah. And it's nice. It's cool. That's really cool. I didn't realize that they had that relationship with Johns Hopkins. I mean, is there any opportunity for cross-registration at other schools? Because I know RISD and Brown have a relationship. I mean, it is hard to take a Brown class if you're a RISD student. Sometimes the schedules don't line up. But does Micah have that? Yeah, Micah has that with Johns Hopkins. Um, and I did apply for those classes, but it's just, it's difficult just in terms of scheduling, just because the schedules are different. Like MICA classes meet once a week where Johns Hopkins classes meet two or three times a week. And it's just like, how do you get from point A to point B in time for class? And like all of this, if you want to take a science class at Johns Hopkins, like good luck, because <laughs> if you're a MICA student, it's going to be like, those classes are going to fill up because MICA students get like last priority um, and last seating for those classes. And not saying it's not possible. like please try. If you want to do that, please try. Because I think I applied to it once and it didn't work out. And I was just like, I'm not going to pursue this, but I'm sure if you pursued it more, it, it would work out. Um, yeah. And there's so, also some programs at MICA where Johns Hopkins is, comes to comes to MICA and that's where they have class. Um, there's programs like that. So it's a little bit easier to get that exposure. Yeah, I think, again, it's like you got to do your research because yeah. a lot of these cross registration programs, it sounds awesome, right? Oh, I can take classes at Brown if I'm a RISD student. But it's like the reality is that it is hard to do. And it's, it's not really difficult. Does it? But I mean, in some cases, you have to stay an extra week 
on campus for your Brown exam or come back a little bit early. And so a lot of people have not thought through some of those logistics, which I think can be very challenging. Yeah, well, they definitely look, advertise it. They're like, hey, you can do this. And I'm just like, can I? Are you sure? <laughs> yeah, and then the whole thing about being at the bottom of the barrel. Like if a Brown student wants to take a RISD class, they will consider all the RISD students first before they even look at the Brown student. And so you don't realize that priority wise, you don't have priority. It's actually a lot more difficult. So yeah. Well, let's talk a little bit about student life at MICA because that's a whole other thing. I mean, we've talked a little bit about the academics and stuff, but is there a big social life? Is it a party state? Like, what is it actually like? Um, there are like a few parties, but I wouldn't, Micah's not a party school. Like there are parties cause it's like college, but it's not like, it's not like if you go to university with a frat, like it's not like that. Um, it's definitely like, for me, it's funner. <laughs> like, cause it's mostly, it's like, more like you know you know everyone who's at the party because mike is a small school like you know people who are at the party you know what's going on like it's like it's fun like for me it's fun to have like a more small gathering like that um and then like you know there's some there's like usually a group of kids are like we're gonna make we're gonna host a rager and like that's fun um but they really only happen a couple times a year like only a handful of times it's not really a party school but Student life is nice. Like, again, the community, people like to talk to each other. People like to make friends and, you know, talk to people in different majors and stuff. Um, so everyone's generally, like, really friendly. Like, yeah, student life is nice, especially if you live on campus. Um, the RA and, like, residential, residential staff, um, they have, like, on-campus programs for like community building and just like general events and stuff. And a lot of clubs host events too, which is really fun. There are actually a lot of on-campus events, actually. Now that I'm thinking <laughs> about it, there's actually a lot. Um, Cause when I was on our, our NRA, I was required to, I think to run four programs a semester, um, either just like for my like residents or for larger, um, larger on-campus events. I actually hosted um, me and my film major friend who is also works as a comedian while she was at MICA. We hosted like a comedy night event, um, which was really fun to just learn how to program to that degree because we got a huge turnout actually. Um, and we were thinking about doing it again, like my senior year, but then Corona happened. So that didn't happen, But <laughs> but yeah, no, it's definitely like, yeah, there's a lot of on-campus things going on. Well, tell me in the chat, you guys, I, I'm sort of curious here, who here was a party animal <laughs> in college and who here was a big nerd like me and never went to any parties and just stayed in the studio and worked? Because honestly, that was my social life when I was in art school is I would just hang out with a bunch of friends. We'd be in the studio working and motivating each other. And for me, that was enough. I mean, yeah, once in a while I go see a movie or something like that, but I was like, I don't wanna spend my college education partying the whole time. Like I really wanna work on what I'm doing. So yeah. Well, actually let's talk about the program you're in now because although you finished your BFA degree in painting, you're now enrolled in a program which is the MAT program in art education at MICA right now. And so this is technically your fifth year at MICA. So can you explain how that works? Because I had no idea this program existed. I was like, wow, this is awesome. <laughs> how come more people don't know about it? Yeah, I didn't know about it until my until I was at MICA, like probably midway through my freshman year. But so MICA has this master's program in art education where it's a five-year program where you get your bachelor's and whatever major you are um, at MICA, and then you get your master's in art education if you spend an extra year there. So over the course of the four years you're doing your undergra undergraduate, you're also taking graduate level classes. Um, and then fifth year, it's like end game, like all graduate level classes, like let's go. Um, I 
definitely getting into that program. Initially getting into that program, I was like, I'm a painting major at an art school. What am I going to do when I graduate? Um, that was definitely like my thought process. Like, what if I, what am I going to do? Just because I, I noticed I wasn't very interested in like the fine art scene and the gallery scene. I was like, I think this isn't really what I want to be doing. Um, but over time, so like definitely over the course of my undergraduate, like they have you take intro to teaching and they have you observe like actual schools in the Baltimore area, um, learn about early childhood development, things like that. So the first handful of classes during my under, undergraduate um, time was, um, I was very on the fence. I was like, I don't know if I'm gonna continue with this finish out. Like, I don't know if I was gonna finish out the program or just take the classes as, as an undergrad and then just like graduate with a bachelor's. Um, but definitely my senior year, probably the end of my junior year and senior year, I really started liking the program because I started my my first teaching internship um, at a school in Baltimore and it was teaching elementary school kids. And I was like, I like this. It was just, it was just so much fun. And the teachers are really nice. Um, they're very accommodating. They're very easy to talk to. Um, the only thing that I would keep in mind if you are doing that program is that your undergraduate scholarship does not roll over to the fifth year of grad school because it's technically a graduate program. So it's a different program. Um, so, and the MAT program does try to match that, but occasionally like they are not able to for whatever reason. Luckily, I was able to just on my own and like through Micah was able to be like, help me. <laughs> um, and so they were able to provide enough money for me to continue with the program. Cause it really got to a point where I was like, if I don't get this money, I can't finish the, the program. I can't finish my master's degree. Um, but luckily, through a series of fortunate events, um, I was able to get that that money um, and be in the program, and I love it. And the fifth year is way different than the undergraduate courses because it's all graduate. You're it's so focused on your degree and what you're doing. Like it's it's definitely and also. I also noticed as an undergraduate, while being an MAT, I was basically a painting and MAT major. So it really did feel like a double major, um, which is why <laughs> I'm thinking about like I was crazy because I was basically a double major and taking six semester, six course semester. That's crazy. <laughs> Now, if you didn't know about the MIT program being connected to the BFA program, can you just sign up once you get there? Or do you have to apply as a BFA MIT student? You can sign up once you get there. Like if you get into, cause I didn't know about it until I already got into MICA. Um, and then before you can actually, you have to apply to be in the MIT program, um, but it's a very easy process. Um, you have to take intro to teaching before you can apply to be in the program. And then you have to talk to the MAT department head and she's lovely, very nice. And it, it's very much like a conversation where she sees you, you see her and just talking about the fit of the program for you. Um, but it's, it's still like, it's a, it's a formal application process, but it's still very casual because you know the people you're applying for and they know you and they know what you're about. Um, it's less like, it's less anonymous when you're applying, which I think is really helpful. Well, I think it's appealing because for a lot of people, if they do wanna do an MAT, they have to go to another school or they have to apply and it's not as set up. It doesn't seem as fluid as what you were able to do. We have a question from Lemonaden who is saying, how is the painting and GFA major at MICA? I don't know, is GFA, is that graphic design? I don't know what GFA it's is. It's general for. fine arts. Oh, okay, all right, so what is that like? So I knew a couple people, I was only painting and I knew a couple people that were GFA. So GFA has a lot more required classes. Like you're required to take like 
more like one or two more liberal arts classes um, before you go into like different majors, like before going into like different classes that specialize in different majors. Um, I've noticed that it is um, pretty flexible actually. I, a lot of people that are painting majors switch to GFA because they're interested in other things and they have easy access to courses that are different from what they're doing. Um, and they also get their own studios, their junior and senior year, GFA and painting. GFA, painting and drawing are able to have access to their own studios um, starting junior year. Um, and that's not always the case for other majors. Scott is asking, do you recommend transferring credits from a community college for basics to save money or are the foundations too valuable? Absolutely transfer credits. <laughs> Absolutely do that if it's going to save you money. I knew several people that did that, that went to community college and then transferred credits and it worked out fine. Um, there may be some hiccups. It just depends what courses you take and what micros required. Um, I think occasionally, even if you do transfer credits, they still require you to take one or two of the foundational classes just so that they know that everyone is getting the same information. Um, but if it saves you a significant amount of money, which it, I think probably will definitely do that. Dara is saying, were there professional networking and career opportunities that were really attractive? That's a great question because it varies in terms of what schools provide for students. So what was it like at MICA? So MICA definitely pushes like career opportunities. Um, they have a whole career department. Um, they, yeah, they have a whole career department office um, on campus, which is really nice. And you can go to them. They can check your resume. They can check your portfolio. They can tell you how to make a business card, which is nice. Um, and every year, MICA holds a career fair where they're able to bring people from across the country, really, occasionally internationally, occasionally, but mostly just like nationally. Um, and they're just people that are looking for interns, employees. Um, and you can really just like that day, like talk to them and ask them questions about the field, or you can apply for a job, or it's just really networking and getting to know people. And usually on career day, they have professional photo shoots so that you can get your picture taken professionally to have just wherever. That is a sweet perk. <laughs> That's it's amazing. Nice. Yeah. Well, because getting a professional headshot is expensive. It's not yeah. easy to do unless you have like a friend <laughs> that can do exactly, it for you. That's, yeah. that's totally awesome. I love that. A Eric says, I'm concerned about trying to go to a very good art college because they mostly cost much money. I'm not sure if I'll benefit enough from it in the future. It's a big question for a lot of people is, is it going to be worth the tuition and the investment? So was it worth it for you in the end, Anjali? Well, yeah, for me, it was worth it because, well, it really depends like your financial standing I was very fortunate in my financial standing because I was able to get more than half my tuition paid in scholarship and I was able to live off campus. And um, I think, yeah, my senior year, um, my mom was able to get tuition remission for me. So it really, it really does depend on your financial situation and what you're willing to pay and do. Um, and I took out minimal loans. Um, which was very important for me. So it really just depends what your priorities are and what you're looking for. Really, depending on how much initiative you take on your education, you can you can thrive anywhere, any art school. Um, it really just depends like what you want to do with it and where you want to spend your time. Because um, I really, being at my gut, I really try to <laughs> suck it out of like take everything out of Micah. Like I was like, I'm going to get my money's worth for sure out of the school. Like no matter what, that's what I'm going to do. And that was really my goal. So yeah, for me, it was definitely worth it. But of course, every situation is different. Um, and I was definitely very fortunate financially. Right. I think a lot of students at our school, they don't know what's in their backyard. I'm like, you guys have so many things. 
right here on campus. And it's like, I have people who are like, no, I've never been there. I'm like, how could you not go? Like, this is this incredible resource that you have on campus. We have a question from Lemonaden who's saying, what do painting and fine art majors do immediately after graduating? I want to pursue art, but at the same time, it seems a little terrifying. Any thoughts on that, Anjali? It's terrifying. I, I don't know what to tell <laughs> It's terrifying. Um, so a couple things that they do is that they either get an internship or a job at a gallery. Um, they take some, they usually take some time off. Um, they, I'm trying to think. They, the more you get closer to graduation, the more you're exposed to what you can actually do with your art degree, which is actually a lot. Um, and it's just a matter of like what you're looking for, um, either design based or community based, or you really just have to, I think being an artist, you kind of have to be creative with your career anyway. <laughs> like that's just kind of what you sign up for when you decide to go to art school is like, how, how are you gonna support yourself? And it's scary, I know, for me, I'm in a different position because I'm in the MAT program now. Um, so the year after graduating, I was like, I'm going to grad school. Like, that's what I'm doing. Um, some of my friends, some of my other friends that were painting or GFA, they're still, they took some time off and they're thinking about grad school or they're just getting a job. Just And also this is a weird time right now because of Corona and everything. Um, but yeah, it's scary. I mean, my advice, Lemonaden, is that again, like the schools, don't assume because you're a painting major, oh, I'm doomed. And don't assume, oh, if I go into graphic design, I'll get a job. It, it does not have anything to do with that because I know people who went into these quote, jobs that are supposed to make you money like automatically and they're not doing anything. I also know people who are in majors that supposedly you make no money who are doing extremely well. So it, it really comes down to you. I mean, that's oftentimes not really what people want to hear, but it's true. I mean, it's, it's not necessarily the major that does that. Dara is asking, how many of the things that you learn in either program are things you can pick up by yourself? Well, that's interesting. I know this is in response to Scott's earlier comment, which we didn't read, but Anjali, have you had to fill in the blanks at MICA in terms of, oh, I didn't learn this, MICA didn't give me this, I need to do this on my own? Occasionally, yeah. Occasionally it would be like, I. it would definitely be like, I want to learn this. And so I would seek out a professor or another student that knew that, and, so, and if they would be willing to teach me how to do that. Um, but definitely people at MICA are very open to questions. They're like, if you ask about it, they'll most likely try to help you. Um, yeah, it's definitely, I think also being in an art school, uh, senior and junior year, mostly senior, it's a lot of independent work where you're just working on your thesis. Um, so definitely my thesis was not like I was a painting major, but I wasn't painting. Um, I was working with, <laughs> I was working with fibers, wood, um, things like that. And so a lot of those things I had to learn by myself. Um, so I taught myself how to sew. I taught myself how to use the CNC at the school um, and definitely like with help, like I had help. Um, and definitely seeking out that help is very easy because people are willing to help you, especially if they, especially if you're nice, um, <laughs> especially if you're nice, they want to help you, um, which is, which is nice. Well, I mean, I was talking to Jordan McCracken Foster, who's a teaching artist here at ArtProf, and he said that it's a mistake for students to have an expectation that whatever art school you go to is going to give you everything you need. That is not true. There is no school on the earth that is going to teach you everything you need to know. I mean, for ArtProf, I had to teach myself how to edit video, how to run shoots and everything. And so art school can definitely give you a basis but it's not gonna do everything for you. For example, Soitain Lee saying, most things you can learn on your own, but the college experience is as much about open discussions, which you may not get online. Yeah, so it's hard because there are certain things that are much harder to learn online than they are in person. 
Art Prof has a podcast. It's available on Spotify and also on iTunes. And in a little bit, I will be in the Art Prof Discord hanging out in the post live streams channel. So you're all welcome to come over there, talk about art school, sushi, whatever you guys want to be discussing today and subscribe to our channel and join the Art Prof family. And I want to say thank you to our top Patreon supporters who keep ArtProf up and running, make it possible for us to make our content 100% free. Thank you to everybody in the chat for your questions, for your comments, contributing to the discussion. And also thank you to Anjali for joining us today and giving us the dish on how Micah works. So everybody, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.